Earth, a planet that's four and a half billion years old, a place of beauty, wonder, and life. From the highest mountains to the deepest oceans, life teems in a delicate balance. But what if I told you that this balance has been shattered, not once, not twice, but five times, five catastrophic events that nearly wiped the slate clean. And here's the scariest part. Some scientists believe we might be heading for the next one. Our first stop takes us back 443 million years to the Ordovician Silurian extinction. Picture a world vastly different from our own. The continents were clustered together and life flourished in the vast shallow seas. Trilobites, creatures resembling horseshoe crabs, scuttled along the seabed. Brachiopods, shelled animals resembling clams, filtered food from the water. The first primitive fish, jawless and armored, navigated this underwater jungle. But then, the world began to change. Temperatures plummeted. Massive glaciers, vast rivers of ice spread across the land, locking away water and causing sea levels to drop dramatically. The shallow seas, teeming with life, shrank, and the once vibrant ecosystems collapsed. Imagine the chaos, the struggle for survival as temperatures dropped and food became scarce. The trilobites once so abundant perished in droves. The brachiopods, their delicate ecosystems disrupted, vanished. This wasn't a gradual decline, it was a swift, brutal extermination of an entire world. By the time the ice receded, nearly 85% of marine species had vanished. What caused this dramatic shift in Earth's climate? The answer lies in the movement of continents. The supercontinent Gondwana drifted towards the South Pole, disrupting ocean currents and triggering a global cooling event. Volcanic eruptions, spewing ash and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, further exacerbated the cooling effect. The Ordovician Silurian extinction was a stark reminder of the power of climate change. It showed that even in the face of global catastrophe, life finds a way, but the road to recovery was long and the world would never be the same. We journey now to the Devonian period, roughly 375 million years ago. Life had recovered from the Ordovician Silurian extinction and was flourishing once more. The seas teemed with fish, placoderms, armored giants with bony plates and lobe-finned fish, ancestors of our modern-day amphibians. On land, plants, pioneers in a new frontier, were beginning to spread across the continents, transforming the barren landscape into lush green forests. But beneath this vibrant tapestry of life, a silent killer lurked. The very success of life would sow the seeds of its own destruction. As plants colonized the land, they released nutrients into the water, fueling massive algal blooms. These blooms choked the seas, depriving them of oxygen, a process known as anoxia. Imagine the scene vast stretches of ocean once vibrant with life transformed into suffocating dead zones. Fish, once masters of their domain, gasping for breath in the oxygen-deprived waters. The once thriving reefs home to a kaleidoscope of life transformed into barren wastelands. Over millions of years a series of environmental disasters unfolded, each more devastating than the last. Volcanic eruptions spewed ash and toxic gases into the atmosphere, further depleting oxygen levels. Climate change, driven by the shifting continents, added to the chaos. The late Devonian extinction was a slow-motion catastrophe, a series of blows that decimated marine life. By the time the dust settled, over 75% of marine species had vanished. The mighty placoderms, their reign of terror ended, disappeared from the face of the Earth. The late Devonian extinction serves as a stark reminder of the delicate balance of Earth's systems. It highlights the interconnectedness of life and the environment, how even the most insignificant organisms can have a profound impact on the planet. Chapter 3. The Permian-Triassic Extinction. The Great Dying. Our journey through time now takes us to the Permian-Triassic boundary, 252 million years ago. Life had rebounded from previous extinctions, diversifying into a dazzling array of forms. The continents had merged to form the supercontinent Pangaea, surrounded by a vast global ocean. Reptiles, ancestors of the dinosaurs, were beginning to assert their dominance. But what transpired next was an apocalypse unlike any other in Earth's history. The Permian-Triassic Extinction, also known as the Great Dying. Imagine a world on fire. In present-day Siberia, a series of colossal volcanic eruptions unleashed unimaginable fury upon the Earth. Lava, flowing like rivers of fire, engulfed an area larger than Europe. But the true horror lay not in the lava itself, but in what it unleashed. 
Toxic gases, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, methane, spewed into the atmosphere, blanketing the planet in a poisonous shroud. Temperatures soared, oceans acidified, and acid rain fell from the sky, poisoning the land and water. The effects on life were catastrophic. Forests withered and died, replaced by vast barren landscapes. The oceans, once teeming with life, became stagnant and lifeless. Over 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial species perished. The trilobites, survivors of two previous mass extinctions, finally succumbed to the apocalypse. The Permian-Triassic extinction was the closest life has ever come to being completely wiped out. It serves as a chilling reminder of the fragility of life and the devastating consequences of runaway climate change. Yet even in the face of such devastation, life endured, clinging tenaciously to survival. Chapter 4. The Triassic-Jurassic Extinction. Making way for giants. We emerge from the ashes of the great dying into the Triassic period 250 million years ago. Life, though clinging precariously to survival, began the long, slow process of recovery. The dinosaurs, once a minor group of reptiles, began their rise to dominance, but the Earth was still reeling from the Permian-Triassic extinction. The supercontinent Pangaea, racked by volcanic activity, began to break apart. As the land masses drifted apart, massive volcanic eruptions ripped through the Earth's crust, spewing out lava and toxic gases. These eruptions released colossal amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, triggering a period of intense global warming. The oceans, still recovering from the Permian-Triassic extinction, were hit hard once more. Acidification increased, temperatures soared, and oxygen levels plummeted. Many marine species already struggling to survive couldn't cope with the rapid environmental changes. On land, the rising temperatures created extreme weather patterns, intense droughts punctuated by torrential downpours. Wildfires raged across the continents reshaping ecosystems and driving many species to extinction. The Triassic-Jurassic extinction, although not as severe as the Great Dying, resulted in the loss of around 80% of species on Earth. Many of the large reptiles that had dominated the Triassic, such as the crocodile-like phytosaurs and the heavily armored etosaurs, disappeared. But from the ashes of this extinction, a new era dawned. The dinosaurs, having weathered the storm, emerged as the undisputed rulers of the planet. The Triassic-Jurassic extinction, while tragic for those species lost, paved the way for the reign of the dinosaurs, a period of reptilian dominance that would last for over 135 million years. Chapter 5. The Cretaceous Paleogene. Extinction. Farewell to the Dinosaurs. Our journey through time brings us to the end of the Cretaceous period, 66 million years ago. Dinosaurs ruled the Earth for over 135 million years. Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops and other magnificent creatures roamed a warmer world. But their reign was destined to end. A six-mile-wide asteroid hurtled towards Earth. The impact was cataclysmic. It slammed into the Yucatan Peninsula with the force of a billion atomic bombs, a blinding flash as the asteroid pierced the atmosphere. An earth-shattering impact sent shockwaves around the globe. Tsunamis crashed against coastlines, engulfing continents. Molten rock ignited wildfires across the planet. Dust and debris blocked out the sun, plunging Earth into twilight. Temperatures plummeted, plants withered, and the food chain collapsed. Dinosaurs stood little chance. The Chicxulub impact wiped out 76% of life, including dinosaurs. But new life arose from the ashes. Mammals seized the opportunity, and diversified. The extinction paved the way for mammals, leading to Homo sapiens. The sixth extinction, a human story. That brings us to today. We've journeyed through time, witnessed the rise and fall of countless species and seen the resilience of life on Earth. But now, we face a sobering reality. Many scientists believe we are in the midst of a sixth mass extinction, driven by none other than us, humans. We are changing the planet at an unprecedented rate. Species are disappearing at rates 1,000 times faster than natural background extinction. Habitat destruction, climate change, pollution, and overhunting are pushing countless species to the brink. The very fabric of life on Earth is unraveling, and we are the ones pulling the threads. But here's the difference. We have the power to change this. Unlike previous extinctions, we can see it happening in real time, and we have the tools to reverse the damage. 
Mass extinctions remind us that Earth is resilient, but it also shows us how fragile life can be. The question isn't whether Earth will survive, it's whether we will. Every action counts, from supporting conservation efforts to reducing our carbon footprint. The fate of countless species including our own could depend on what we do right now. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more content like this. Let me know in the comments. Do you think we can avoid the sixth mass extinction? I'd love to hear your thoughts.